has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. I know it's a little ways off, Carver High, but I always like to keep the schedule for the Pharrell Davidians up to date. Next week, I believe uh, that the Prime Minister will be doing the show with me uh, on Monday through Thursday. And then I think Mafia will be doing it Friday, uh, unless I'm mistaken, as you go off to the uh, Disney experience in Orlando and the theme park of all theme parks, the vacuum, as we like to call it. Uh, You're going to have a good time at Disney with the kids and hot Nicole for sure. So we wish you a great vacation ahead of time. Also, don't forget on Saturdays, uh, Pharrell and Joe Ranieri, the mayor of Miami on in-game live all access at 12 to 4 Eastern. And then on Sundays, there is nothing quite like curing your hangover with a dose of Marenzi and Pharrell from 1 to 4 Eastern in the early 1 o'clock NFL games every weekend on in-game live all access. Set your calendars, put your alarm on, be ready, strap in. We're getting involved right here on Sports Grid TV. All right, Carver High, I was pretty hot last night hitting baseball games for you, and it started with my plush play of the Astros winning at the Trop. Uh, it certainly did, Scotty, and that is where we will start tonight. Uh, before we get into tonight's games, we'll look at last night. The Astros beat the Rays 4 nothing at the Trop. They clinch their fifth AL West title in the last six years. And it got started right out of the gate. Jose Altuve, AT&T Sportsnet Southwest. Altuve drives one deep to left field, and this game starts with a bang. Leadoff home run number 11 on the season. Nobody in the majors with more leadoff home runs than Jose Altuve. I'll tell you what, the left side of the field here at Tropicana Field is on its feet and making a lot of noise for the Astros. Now, Tube understands the how important team these games always are, gets cheered in the trot. from this man right here to get himself into a hitter's count. <laughs> I love that bet last night. That was money. And then, uh, you know, that's their fifth title in six years in the West. They mean business. It is truly unbelievable to me what they've done. Uh, It certainly is. And why not a little celebration last night after the win? Dusty getting involved, Scotty. Of course, Dusty's still looking for the brass ring, hoping to get it this year. He had to have some fun with the guys afterwards. I don't want to go too far ahead, but is this the year that you put that ring on your finger? Well, this is the start of it. You know what I mean? You got to get to this point first. And then you go to the next point, the next point, the next point. So, hey, man, you just got to be grateful for where we are right now and then uh, get back to work tomorrow. What, what do you think came together for you guys to win the division by this many games? I don't know. Just just uh, consistency. Hey, let me have a beer. Oh, here we go. Oh, look at Dusty. Oh, look at Dusty. Oh, he's going to get it. Oh, he's going to get the glass. Oh, look at Dusty. Okay. <laughs> Look at, Look at Dusty. Your boy. Look at your boy still partying. I love Dusty. Good friend of mine. I always loved him. He's great. And uh, he's a great manager. He's getting up there, though. I, I'd love to see him finally win a World Series, but not with that team. Uh, I wish it was with somebody else. That's for I sure. can't have it. Uh, we had can't another it. celebration last night in Milwaukee. A little bit more subdued because the Mets have other things that they are definitely still playing for over the next few weeks, Scotty. But they got Max Scherzer back, 18 up, 18 down. As Bob referenced earlier, they beat the Brewers 7-2. We do welcome in all of our radio affiliates for El Coast to Coast, Sirius XM 159, Sports Map, Sports Byline. Good to have everybody with us. Let's start with Pete Alonzo, Scotty. How about a three-run jack for the Polar Bear on SNY? On two, and Alonso tries one deep left field. Forget that. That is way out of here. Pete Alonso crushes one. Number 36 to put the Mets on top, 3 nothing. I had this puppy uh, up last night on Pharrellandavents.com. I had it on the show. I loved, uh, you know, Scherzer. He's just unbelievable. It doesn't matter where it is, Milwaukee or otherwise. I love betting on him. 
the Mets clinched their first playoff berth since 2016. So, yes, they had a couple of cold ones out, not near the celebration of the Astros. They still are battling with the Braves to win the very important NL East crown. Here is Buck, though, Scotty. First step of what they hope is many steps for the Mets this season. Buck, what's uh, what's your level of pride in, in this first accomplishment by this group? Well, I'm just happy for uh, so many people that have, um, you know, the hard work put in by everybody in the organization, obviously the players. And, uh, you know, step one, you got to have step one to get to the rest of them. But uh, I think our guys understand what's ahead of us and the challenges, but uh, nobody should, you know, feel bad about feeling some elation tonight about getting that. They kind of hit me with two outs in the ninth. I was going, wow, we're an out away from being in there. And so I love to watch the guys feel what they deserve to feel. You know, winning 94 games is really hard. Now we got to try to win 95. And uh, so it's always been a team that stayed in the moment. Yeah, I'm telling you, like tonight, you know, Carrasco against Ashby, now, don't even yeah. tell me they're that strung out and hung over that they can't beat that bone. No. I mean, honestly. They had they had a couple beers. I mean, I saw some shots. Your boy Vogelback, man, he was putting them down last night. He had the Miller High Lives rocking last night in the clubhouse. Your boy Vogelback, oh. he was going. Oh, the <laughs> hangover games always worry me. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The game that I find to be the most fascinating spread in all of the country today because it doesn't seem large enough. College football today. It's the island of misfit tour. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand. And survivor pools for the most part because Pro football I don't today. The most important player despite not being quarter focus of it and I, I think that continues to be a really important part of the offense half in game in in game. i said it'll be a pure access. track me shootout cap another one in game i'm not one who's going to cheer for kylo murray but i am cheering for him in the second half in game live oh, overtime one block nine case and i almost i almost read it as if it was a question like what are they doing it in when they were football you know, full circle plus one and a half i mean this was an insane amount of get the game. winning edge only on sports grid your 24 7 sports wagering network if you want to pick like a pro you need to be in the know the future of sports gaming is now and we take you inside the lines breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. Aaron Rodgers is playing with a ton of new wide receivers this season and doesn't seem all that happy about it. Today we hit the streets of New York to help and find out what's the best way to make new friends. What would you say is the best way to make new friends? Uh, not by talking to them on the street. So not, don't do this. Yeah. Go out and drink, go to the bar. You know, you have to. Maybe not like this. Give them money. Smile. That was nice, wanna give the smile again? The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Start with Tua, of course, who threw for 469 passing yards. Also, six touchdown passes, uh, did throw two interceptions in the first half, but monster game for him. Speaking of which, my gosh, Lamar Jackson. I uh, I mean, I love Jared Goff as a streamer in 12-team leagues. I mean, just getting to play with Amon Ross St. Brown, who I think is probably a top five asset in Dynasty Fantasy Football. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. But I think my takeaway is for all of my slander on the Detroit Lions, their offense might rock, right? Back-to-back games, 35-plus points for the Detroit Lions. I'm Ross St. Brown is turning into one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. I think you're on to something here. The Lions, sometimes those teams that you have that tonic, right, the right moves were aggressive on offense, aggressive on special teams, and not very good but aggressive on defense, you'll get high-scoring games with the Lions. Only on SportsGrid.
All right, Rick Haro is our sports business and legal insider from Harvard on the network and on Coast to Coast. You hear him on Carver and Lisi on Sports Grid Radio as well. Rick, good to see you. I know you're uh, getting ready to travel up here to New York City tomorrow morning, uh, bright and early. Roger Federer is uh, retiring. Will he end up playing in this labor as his last tennis appearance to the fans and, and public and media, or is he going to pull out of that too? No, I think that's what he was planning to do, uh, absent injury. And, and frankly, when I first looked at that, I said he has every right to attract the significant attention that Serena did as Serena did. And so he's a bit more humble. He doesn't have a clothing line to promote as much as she does and life after, you know, Serena investments. And so I'm still a bit wistful that the guy's leaving. There are still two others on the men's side we may like or not like, but they have over 40 majors combined. So it's not over yet, but it came to kind of a sudden end and we're all excited about tennis because of what they did. You know, tennis has increased on a grassroots level about seven and a half percent a year and a largely because of them. And since Marina, Marina Sharapova retired, you have nobody. Do you remember when you used to play those scream tracks when you weren't worried about substance? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you did. She yes, was my favorite. Were. Yeah, I'm sure she was. I always loved sure. her grunts. She was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And I still like eating her uh, sugar pova candy. Uh, let's talk yeah. about uh, there you go. something else before I get fired. Thursday yeah, nice night save. football on Amazon. <laughs> now, I know the executives are saying, we don't care about the ratings at all, but do they care about fans uh, like, let's face it, over 55 that have no clue how to find Amazon Prime on the television? I saw a lot of people complaining about not being able to watch the Thursday night game last week. Yeah, of course they do. And here's the marketing strategy and not for a faint of heart for the first couple of weeks, because all of us over 55 who can't find it are going to go crazy. They're going to call people. They're going to call the sponsors. Sponsors are going to put pressure on them. But guess what? They're going to find them. And at the end of the day, the 120 million or so people that have subscribed to Amazon in the U.S. is going to be up to 130, 140 because for those eight dollars or nine dollars a month, they say, hey, we got it. It's only nine bucks a month every Thursday. Now we know where we are. So it's going to happen. It's just going to take a couple of months. Let's talk about Sarver for a minute and what the uh, NBPA's uh, Tamika Tremaglio said that they want. They want him gone completely. Players want a vote by the other owners to get him out completely and Boy, does that billionaire white man club of owners in the NBA love to protect their own. And that commissioner, he was squealing like a pig for the first time since he's been in office. I thought his press conference talking about it was embarrassing for himself. Well, remember, he quickly maneuvered on Sterling. He quickly maneuvered on the unfortunate comments by the ex-owners of the Atlanta Hawks. So he has some precedent for all of this. I think a lot of it is to do with collective bargaining and leverage. You know, he would say, but he doesn't say it this way, that employees probably shouldn't determine the conditions of how employers should treat other employers. But yet that's not really the issue in the court of popular opinion. And so I'm thinking that at the end of the day, whether Robert Sarver is popular or not, he does have an asset. And you can't just remove him because he says some stupid things. And boy, he said some stupid things. So lawyers are getting ready. How about that better that almost turned seven dollars yeah. into a million, but he <laughs> cashed out for around two hundred and fifty large. Smart or not? Why did he stop, man? Now, well, yeah, smart because he got two hundred fifty grand more than he had in the early part of the evening, and he has to pay the feds. Stupid because well, all right, what would you have done? Both bets hit. He had the yeah, Washington right. over, and he had yeah. the A&M minus six and a half. They uh, both would have hit. He would yeah. have had a million. What would you have done? I would have rode the lightning. I never bail out. The only time I got <laughs> bailed out was when my buddy bailed out on the MB, 300 grand. He made about 125000 hedging for Jokic, and I got nothing. Easy for Pharrell to say, roll the lightning. Well, let's see if he would have or not. I, I, I tend to believe you, and I tend to go the other way. Uh, I'm a conservative guy by nature. You know that. But I know you're not. So it would have been interesting. That's because you went to Harvard and you're rich as all Pharrell. Uh, let's yeah. talk about uh, Kansas. 
how's the winnings uh, with the sports betting in Kansas? I know the Kansas Jayhawks win every bet that they're involved in. How about the game against West Virginia and the game against Houston where they blow out the teams that they're big dogs to going in? Yeah, and frankly, not a bad thing for the uh, governor of Kansas who signed the bill and said, we're going to start betting and you can do it right after I bet on the Chiefs. And, you know, that worked out okay for her. But you got a few teams in that state that are pretty damn good. And the revenues are about $70 million for the first couple of weeks. Way ahead of expectations, by the way, but that's because they're rabid. They've got really good teams, and they shut out their neighbors. There's nothing more exciting to a person in Kansas than waving to your neighbor in Missouri and saying, hey, by the way, stay over there. You, you can't bet. Yeah, how about uh, Pennsylvania? How's Pittsburgh and Philadelphia doing for the Kofers? Yeah, good, especially on the Pittsburgh side. You know, the Western Pennsylvania side, you know that area really well. And you know places around, you know, Ligonier and some of the other spots near the Pennsylvania Turnpike when you get into Pittsburgh, uh, fairly depressed areas. And they're looking for revenues from gambling to improve the Turnpike, improve infrastructure, get the schools going, get a lot of the fire protection otherwise. And the revenues look really good for Western Pennsylvania. How about uh, Trey Lance and he breaks his ankle and we're back in bed with Jimmy G in San Francisco. And the reality is, I think they're a possible Super Bowl contender because of it. Yeah, I think, uh, look, the guy's already taken him to Super Bowl. He was one day from being homeless. You know, all of the trade rumors about Cleveland and about Carolina, you know, sit with what you've got. Backup quarterbacks are really important. Uh, my guys in Miami, everybody's talking about what would you get for Teddy Bridgewater? Well, Tua, even though he threw for 9,000 yards, you know, is one hit away from being in that same position. I'm not saying it's going to happen. God shouldn't I say it's going to happen, but you got to hold on to your assets. You got to hold on to your backup quarterback. Uh, Urban Meyer has been mentioned in Lincoln. Uh, they were there for their Fox pregame show. But I'm hearing Bill O'Brien and Campbell at Iowa State are uh, on top of that list, and it's not Urban Meyer. Are they really going to hire Urban Meyer? Well, you know, look, we put that in that article because there were five or six, and the standard I do with my people is if you see it in five or six different places, just put it in. And it's been all over the country that he is the, quote, heir apparent. Uh, you and I both saw what he did in Jacksonville. He self-immolated. And uh, I'm not sure why anybody in Nebraska would hire him, but I'm not the AD. So talk to me about the Bundesliga and the NFL getting in bed. That's a really good in bed, by the way, because for years, the NFL was talking about how important Germany was. You remember with the World League of American Football, you had the Rhine Fire and the sure. uh, teams in Berlin, the Berlin Thunder. There were four teams that were really good. And now they're alternating between Munich this year. They're playing a game and Frankfurt. And what better organization to help control and increase the excitement about NFL football than the German Bundesliga? So, and Katarina Witt, by the way, years ago, was a very interested spectator in football and the NFL in Germany. And now Bernard Langer interested in it. I know because we've talked NFL football and Germans love football. Clearly, it's not just the expats. Uh, you know, I got to tell you, uh, it was amazing to me, the entire uh, Queen's funeral, everything about it was, you know, insane. I have never seen a, a funeral that long in my life for anybody. I mean, that was unbelievable. It took 12 hours and they stopped every sporting event. Yeah, they stopped every sporting event. Now, you know, in, in the Premier League now, when they resume it, uh, 70 minutes in, you're going to have 70 claps uh, because of her 70 year rain uh they've stopped them and also you've got stopped we'll come back we'll talk about it later how's that all right have a great trip rick all right, thank you. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. With a game that I find to be the most fascinating spread in all of the country today. Because it doesn't seem large enough. College football today. 
it's the island of misfit toys. Fantasy sports so, today. You have to understand. In survivor pools for the most part because pro football I don't today. It most important player despite not being quarter focus of it and I, I think that continues to be a really important part of the offense half in game in this in game. Game. I said it'll be a pure access. track me shootout half in game I'm not one who's going to cheer for Kylo Murray but I am cheering for him in the second half in game live oh, overtime one block in 9Ks and I almost, I almost read it as if it was a question. Like, what are they I doing? In when they were football you know, full circle, plus one and a half. I mean, this was an insane amount of Get line. Get the movement. winning edge only on Sports Grid, your twenty four seven sports wagering network. I'm slightly conflicted, is because I feel like I love so much on the board, but do I love one thing more than another? Can I call one thing my favorite bet? Or my best bet. We'll find out. And there's just overall chaos is what it looks like with this offense. On fourth down, Jacoby Myers and Davian Harris running into each other, but the Patriots getting bailed out by a PI down the field. The morning after, only on Sports Grid. And now you're starting to see these younger players starting to develop, younger players starting to grow, and we're watching these Mariners who may get in the postseason. Talk about the bad beats all the time. That's a good win, you know, because it, it was one that I don't know if it was the right side. <laughs> watching the game and then watching the way it played out. The Bostonian versus the book only on Sports Grid. Sports Professor Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Congratulations to Florida Blue. A $60 million deal through 2027 with Inter Miami. Not just the facility in the stadium, but a training facility, Broward County, Fort Lauderdale, and a tie in with the Unified Paralympic team, which is also very important. What they're as, trying to do as well is to reach into the Florida, South Florida Hispanic community and Florida Blue, uh, the subsidiary, the name of the Florida Blue Cross Insurance Company, is generating significant input and community activation by doing this. MLS also picks up a substantial naming partner combined with Salt Lake and their $100 million deal makes it a prolific growth bet for the MLS down the road and certainly for soccer in South Florida. Sports Professor Rick Haro, Daily Numbers Game. God is my witness. I just got Haro to download the BetMGM app right in front of Carver High, and he got a risk-free bet of up to $1,000. And he used the bonus code Coast to Coast, Coast, the number two, Coast, Coast to Coast. That's the code. And he put it in immediately. Dolphins plus five and a half, and he laid the whole kit and caboodle on the fins. Well, it's a good thing that it's a risk-free bet, bet, right, Scotty? Because he's going to be able to run that back uh, for Yilis. Flipper uh, when they lose on Sunday, that's for sure. All right, I have Yilis. more baseball to get to. By the way, um, I actually forgot this earlier. They are playing a doubleheader in Los Angeles yeah. uh, today between the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers. Sixth inning, 5-1 D-backs in game number yeah. one uh, right now out there in L.A. We'll talk about last night and game two in a moment. So the Mets won in Milwaukee. Braves, as always, keep pace against the Nationals, Scotty. A 5-2 to two win, and I was so busy with all the football last night and the, Bull and the Bills beating up on the Titans that I forgot to tweet you to ring the bell for Austin Riley last night on Valley Sports South. Here we go. Swing, fly ball, well hit toward There's left. There's a drop. Ball going back. He's at the track. He's at the wall. He's going to leap. And that ball is gone. A majestic home run for Austin Riley. You got to love it. And uh, they would have covered that one and a half, too. I wouldn't be surprised if they uh, do it again tonight. Uh, they cer certainly would have, that's for sure. They don't lose. Uh, they win every single night. 
uh, it seems like. It's, an, it's amazing how it's going with them and the Mets. Dodgers did beat Arizona last night. Here he is again, Scotty, our boy, Joey Gallo. And I don't know if you saw the actual clip, the highlight from this I one. I saw it. This was an absolute bomb on Sportsnet LA. Wow! Oh, my! Whoa! Joey Gallo! Way gone! I mean, it, it was in the concession stand in right field. Literally, it, it, it yeah. plunked someone right in the back of the head. It was deep. Like, there, there was a dude getting a beer and a dog, like, above those bleachers out in right center field. And it just, I, I don't think I've seen one that deep on that side of Dodger Stadium before. That was ridiculous. Well, I can't believe what he's doing because he was wow. so stench awful in New York. I cannot believe how many home runs he's hit for the Dodgers. It's beyond me. I mean, there's something in the water. I don't even know. I mean, the water here is obviously polluted. They must have clean water out there or something. Nobody can water he their yards, you. but they got clean water. He told you that first week he was there. He loves living on that little condo out there outside the beach. Nice Southern California living, not the hustle and bustle of New York City. That's all he needs, just a little laid-back Joey Gallo. The Mariners beat the Angels last night 9-1. to one. Uh, The Angels, the mighty Angels with Trout and Otani, once again officially eliminated from playoff contention. But we never pass up an opportunity, Scotty, to get the soul man – uh, Dave Sims in the mix on Root Sports with the Carlos Santana Grand Slam. We never passed that up. Pitch from Suarez. Fly ball, deep left field. Giddy up, baby. Giddy up. There it goes. A Grand Slam by Carlos Santana. Carlos Santana with a Grand Slam, and the Mariners have a 5 nothing lead. And that'll do it. You get a, a G spot, it's over. Yep, they would get a three-run homer from Ty France also uh, as the route was on there against the Angels. The Marlins beat the Cubbies 10-3 to last night. You mentioned a Bob. The Orioles got whacked by the Tigers of all teams, 11-0 last night. Poor effort there. The Rockies and the Giants played a crazy Coors Field-esque game. They went to extra innings, tied at 7 Tiago Estrada, Scotty, in the 10th. How about a little John Miller on KNBR in San Francisco? They run the pitch. Swing, and there's a drive into deep left field. Way back there. Adios, Pelota. So Tyro Estrada did not get the walk. He was not happy about it. Instead, what he does get is a three-run game breaker. <laughs> <laughs> Your boy John Miller getting involved. That was good. He's great. One of the all-time, one of the all-time greats right there. Uh, John Miller on the leader. Uh, Javi Baez offering free food to the victims of the Hurricane Fiona in Puerto Rico. Nice job by Javi with that one. Before we get to tonight's game, Scotty, once again, I will not, I refuse to leave you hanging with the baseball props, the strikeouts, and the taters. We need to get back to business today here on Coast to Coast. Let's start with the strikeouts. Dirty Harry McClanahan against the Astros tonight. I hope Bob's right. I hope nobody plays, that they all got hammered last night in the Tampa area, and we get Dirty Harry over 4.5 Ks at minus 150 to lead things off. How about the fishermen? Charlie Morton, 6.5 against the Nationals tonight. Over for minus 135. He's over in four of his last six starts. He had seven the only other time he faced the Nationals this year. Dylan Cease against the Guardians tonight. Massive series for the White Sox. He's over five and a half in his last four games. Minus 150 there. Fourth outing against uh, Cleveland. Four, nine, and three in his other three starts against them. And finally, Louis Castillo for the Mariners tonight against Oakland. Seven and a half. He's over that in three of his last four starts. Faced the A's once since going to Seattle. Only had five. But I'm willing to say he gets over the seven and a half tonight, Scotty. Minus 105. Well, I like uh, Dirty Harry over. I like Morton over. Uh, I'm going to go with Castillo to win, but I'm going to say under. And I need Cease 
to cease throwing strikeouts and pitching well. I need him to lose tonight on the south side. So I'm going to say no on both of those last um, two, Cease and Castillo. But I need Castillo as, to win. As you and Bob are saying, White Sox, it's probably sweeper over uh, as far as I'm concerned. They and they never sweep. Games. They never sweep. Uh, you're absolutely right about that. Tater time. We're going to ring the bell tonight uh, with some home runs around Major League Baseball. So about 10 days ago, the Royals faced the Twins. Dylan Bundy was facing Salvi Perez. I told you he had great numbers against him. What did he do that night? He rang the bell for us. Who's Salvi Perez facing tonight, Scotty? Dylan Bundy again. Six for 15 and two home runs off of him, including one last week, plus 195 for Salvi tonight. Austin Riley, we hit him last night. Why are we going back to the well? Because he's 8 for 27 with two homers off of Patrick Corbin, and he usually hits him in bunches, plus 260 for Riley. Judge, we just have to put in every single night now, right? I mean, plus 165, Judge going for 60 tonight against the Buccos at the stadium. And your boy Estrada, we just heard the John Miller call of his three-run homer last night. Normally, I wouldn't go back to a guy like him for a double dip, but he's four for seven with two homers off of Kyle Freeland, who's starting for the Rockies tonight at Coors. Good price, plus 475. I'll try to ring the bell with Estrada again. Yeah, I'm not feeling him hitting another one, but I'll go with you on those other three. Uh, every night on All Rise, Austin Riley and Bunches, I agree with you, and Salvi owns Bundy. Uh, let's hope he does it again. I love this guy. He just rakes. How about Judge for the deuce tonight to get to 61? Want to get him for the deuce tonight, him to get to oh, 61? Oh, what a deuce against the box. Go, you want to go for the two spot tonight? I did see that some of Maris's family is going to start, starting tonight, start to follow the Yankees around uh, and be in the crowd when Judge goes for these home runs. So they will be there tonight. Ortiz is starting for the Pirates. Could be a good night uh, for a couple of taters for Aaron Judge. And didn't, uh, he, didn't he tee off on the Pirates in that second game in a- Pittsburgh a- at PNC? A- hit one to dead center field, and a- I, I think it killed someone. <laughs> He hit that ball. You're right. It might have killed somebody. And that, and not somebody in the stadium. Somebody on one of the boats out in the river. Uh, I think he killed somebody out there. No, no. There. I think it was a shot to left field, if I remember correctly. It was about 35 <laughs> rows up. It was deep. <sighs> he hit it good, that's for sure. All right, let's start the games tonight. We'll finish them after the break. The Red Sox playing out the string. What a shame. In Cincinnati tonight against the Reds. Bello goes for them against Lodolo. The Sox, the road favorite, minus 125. Flat eight the total tonight. I mean, they're both so awful. And, and, you know, the Bello twins are even worse, one and six. But I still think the Red Sox are better than the Reds. I'm going to go Boston. The Cubbies and the Fish again tonight down at South Beach. Pablo Lopez goes for Miami tonight. The Cubbies have Samson on the mound. Marlins minus 160, plus 135 for the Cubs. Total seven. I think Lopez is uh, better than uh, Samson, and I think the Marlins beat him tonight. Dirty Harry McClanahan, as we said, goes for Tampa tonight against the Astros. They have Christian Javier on the mound. Rays minus 150 at the trough, plus 125 for the Astros. Total of, get this, six, Scotty. A flat six total at the trough tonight. Yeah, I, it'll go over that if you ask me. And I like the Rays. I got him at minus a buck 55, a buck 50, even better. I got Dirty Harry over Javier. That's just too low for me. I don't care who's pitching. You want to throw a six my way? Uh, I'm going to take the over. We'll do the rest when we come back. <laughs> Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The game that I find to be the most fascinating spread in all of the country today. 
because it doesn't seem large enough. College football today. It's the island of misfit tour. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand. And survivor pools for the most part because pro football I don't today. With most important player despite not being quarter focus of it and I, I think that continues to be a really important part of the offense half in game in this in game. Game. I said it'll be a pure track access. me shootout half half another one in, in game I'm not one who's going to cheer for Kyler Murray but I am cheering for him in the second half in game live oh, overtime in nine case and I almost I almost read it as if it was a question like what are they I doing in when they were football you know, full circle plus one and a half I mean this was an insane amount of get line the movement. winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. I'm slightly conflicted is because I feel like I love so much on the board, but do I love one thing more than another? Can I call one thing my favorite bet or my best bet? We'll find out. And there's just overall chaos is what it looks like with this offense. On fourth down, Jacoby Myers and Davian Harris running into each other, but the Patriots getting bailed out by a PI down the field. The morning after, only on Sports Grid. And now you're starting to see these younger players starting to develop, younger players starting to grow, and we're watching these Mariners who may get in the postseason talk about the bad beach all the time. That's a good win. You know, because it, it was one that I don't know if it was the right side. <laughs> watching the game and then watching the way it played out. The Bostonian versus the book only on Sports Grid. Sports Professor Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Congratulations to Florida Blue. A $60 million deal through 2027 with Inter Miami. Not just the facility in the stadium, but a training facility, Broward County, Fort Lauderdale, and a tie-in with the Unified Paralympic team, which is also very important. What they're uh, as, uh, trying to do as well is to reach into the Florida, South Florida, Hispanic community and Florida Blue, uh, the subsidiary, the name of the Florida Blue Cross Insurance Company, is generating significant input and community activation by doing this. MLS also picks up a substantial naming partner combined with Salt Lake and their $100 million deal makes it a prolific growth bet for the MLS down the road and certainly for soccer in South Florida. Sports Professor Rick Haro, Daily Numbers Game. All right, Carver High, we continue on uh, with baseball. Uh, several games, 16 uh, for the day. One of them already underway, so 15 tonight. 15 tonight. We will continue on in Philadelphia. Blue Jays and the Phillies tonight. Ross Stripling against Kyle Gibson. Blue Jays, the road favorite, minus 120, plus 100 for the Phillies, eight and a half the total. Down in Philadelphia. You know, I, I like the under, and I like the Phillies tonight over the Jays at Citizens. I think they'll get it done. Uh, I think they'll get to Toronto's bullpen. The Tigers whacked the Orioles last night at Camden Yards. They will look to do the same tonight. Uh, the law firm of Wentz and Voff, the starting pitchers in Camden, Orioles minus 190, Tigers plus a buck 55, eight and a half the total. Yeah, I like the over and the Orioles again. I got burned on the Tigers last night, fair enough, but I hit so many of those other games. I'm going to go back to the well with the O's. The Buckos and the Yankees, two games at the stadium, starts tonight. Nasty Nestor Cortez for the Yankees. Ortiz goes for the Buckos. Yankees heavy lumber, minus 300, plus 240 for the Pirates. The total is eight. Bader is in the lineup, Scotty. You and Bob talked about him coming off the injured list, finally going to play for the Yankees. He's in center field and hitting seventh for the Yankees tonight. Yeah, hopefully he'll break in. He hasn't played in forever, so he's going to be Russ never sleeps. I'm not worried about him. 
Cortez should be able to eat the Pirates alive. Ortiz hasn't pitched five innings the whole season. The Yankees should blow out the Pirates tonight. Come on. They certainly should. Judge hitting leadoff uh, and back in right field with Bader in the lineup. Nationals and the Braves in hot town tonight. The fisherman Charlie Morton against Patrick Corbin. Year can't end fast enough for him. Braves minus 350, plus 260 for the Nationals, eight and a half the total. Uh, again, over because Corbin's pitching and gives up, you know, seven, eight runs a game. He's six and 18. You talk about a disaster. And the fishermen at home in Atlanta, not only do I like the Braves, I like him to roll the Nats by more than two runs. Will the Mets keep pace? Uh, they are in Milwaukee against the Brewers. Carlos Carrasco against Ashby tonight. Mets minus 125, Brewers plus 105. Total of eight. Yeah, I agree with Bob Nightingale that the Brewers are tough, but I don't believe Ashby is. He's two and ten. Carrasco's fifteen and six. I don't care how much beer they drank last night. Give me a break. What do you have to drink? A hundred beers to not be able to perform at your job the next day? You got to drink a hundred beers. Six, twelve beers? That's nothing. Vogel back and crank twenty-five beers and still play tonight. I'm on the Mets. It was nothing. And here's the secret, Scotty. When they're on the road, they go and have those beers every night. You just don't anyway, see it in the clubhouse with all the cameras. That's right. So they're going to be just right. fine uh, tonight. The Angels are in Arlington against the Rangers. Sandoval and Reagans are the pitchers. Minus 125, Angels the road favorite, plus 105 for Texas, eight and a half the total. How hilarious is it that the Angels, whose season is over, and they've been eliminated, that they're actually favored on the road yeah. against anyone. I'll take mm -hmm. anyone at any price, including Texas, over the Angels. We've talked about it quite a bit. Uh, probably, I'm going to say last stand, but just about last stand for the White Sox at home the next couple days with Cleveland coming into town, and they have their ace going tonight. Dylan Cease for the White Sox. Savali goes for Cleveland, minus 175 for Chicago, plus 145 for the guards, seven the total. I mean, uh, this is the most automatic bet of the year, right? That uh, Dylan Cease, and you heard Bob say he's all over Cease, uh, that the yeah. White Sox have to sweep. I heard that from you. Uh, I'm going to bet on the Guardians tonight to beat him in Chicago because they screw everything up, don't they? I think he's a really good pitcher who goes into the sixth or seventh inning, and then all hell breaks loose from there. I like the Guardians. They've been playing too good lately. They don't care who's pitching. They're just teeing off. For as well as the Guardians have been playing, that's a pretty good price you're getting them at tonight at plus 145, uh, considering the kind of ball that they've been going for. Twins are in Kansas City against the Royals. We mentioned that Bundy is going for Minnesota. Zach Granke for the Royals. Twins minus 115, Royals minus 105, big total of nine. Yeah, you know, obviously, Grinky's their best pitcher and, and singer, but I still think the Twins have so much uh, in terms of they're better, they're deeper. Bundy's been better. I like the Twins on the road at the K. Giants and the Rockies in Denver again. Wild one last night. Do we get the same? Brebbia and Kyle Freeland are the starters. Rockies minus 115, Giants minus 105, the always big total of 11 at Coors Field. Yeah, I took the Rockies, but, uh, you know, I'm not going to the window on that. Louis Castillo, we know you're going to the window with him. The Mariners are at the ashtray against the Athletics, minus 225 for them. J.P. Sears and Roebuck going for Oakland tonight. They are plus 180, total of seven. Uh, I don't deny that J.P. pitched really well. Fair enough. That's great. But for me, I, I know the price is enormous, but Castillo and the Mariners are just, they're twice the team the A's are. I mean, go out and handle your business. Adam Wainwright and Mike Clevenger at Petco with the soft serve ice cream tonight. Minus 110 both ways. Total of eight. Of course, Pujols two away, Scotty. We got to get him in the mix at some point on this road trip for the birds. 
Yeah, I, you know, I see it at uh, San Diego minus about 15. I like the Padres and Clevenger to beat him. I think he's uh, great at Bush, and and away from Bush, he's not the same, in my view. I like San Diego at home. And finally, late night on the left coast, 10 o'clock Eastern, first pitch, game two, Diamondbacks and the Dodgers. Tyler Anderson goes for L.A. Jamison's going for the Diamondbacks. Remember, we had the same pitching matchup last week in Arizona, Scotty. Anderson pitched great. Dodgers minus 300, total of eight. Yeah, he's not losing this game. Anderson's going to beat them tonight in uh, L.A. As sure as I'm sitting here, I'm all over the Dodgers. Uh, there you go. Massive night in Major League Baseball. As you mentioned, uh, 16 games altogether, 15 tonight with the one game this afternoon. Uh, let's cash a lot of tickets with the games and, of course, uh, tater time and the strikeouts as well, Scotty. There you go. couple of other things. We'll clean up before we get out of here today on Coast to Coast. A few college football notes. We knew this already. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State are not going to play the Bedlam game anymore after the Sooners leave for the SEC. The ADs, like, have now confirmed it. Uh, there's too many hurt feelings, Scotty. Uh, they're going to let one of the older rivalries in college football just die uh, because everybody's upset that the Sooners are going to the SEC. Well, I mean... I don't blame them. I think that Oklahoma and Texas shafted the Big 12 and they don't deserve friends uh, for their maneuvering and their dirty deals. So uh, I don't blame them. But I'll say this. I think it's just an absolute tragedy that they're going to end Bedlam. It's just bad for business. Uh, people love that rivalry their whole lives. They live for it. And to throw it away so that Oklahoma and Texas can go get rich on TV deals to me, is a sad state of affairs. Well, hopefully, a few years down the line, uh, they'll do what Pitt and West Virginia uh, have now done, and they got the backyard brawl back together. Uh, maybe when everybody gets their feelings not hurt anymore down the road, uh, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State can get the Bedlam game back together, Scotty. We shall see. But money talks in college football, as we know. Hurricanes, I feel like the Canes lose a wide receiver every week. Well, now the guy, now the kid George wide receiver is out. And definitely, didn't you give me a story? Didn't they lose a guy last week too? One of their wide receivers every single week. Van Dyke's losing targets. Their best receiver last week they lost, and now they've lost uh, another one. So uh, I got to tell you, uh, they look terrible in Kyle Field. Uh, that offense all night was yeah. stagnant. I don't know. Uh, you know, the Steelers looked about as bad as them for me. Those are my teams, and uh, both of them couldn't do anything. Even through three games, I don't feel like you've gotten the same kind of zip that you got from Van Dyke at the end of last year. Like, when that season ended last year, he was throwing the ball all over the place. I don't know if it's the offense Cristobal brought with him or anything like that. He, he just doesn't look the same. He's not throwing Two the ball. Two games in a row. Uh, you well. know, Southern yeah. Miss, he didn't look good. Uh, it was average at best. And, and obviously, the game against the Aggies in College Station was even worse. And they got one more uh, tune-up before ACC play, right? Don't they got some fat number against Middle Tennessee State or something like that this weekend? Uh, the U is going to be looking to cover, so we shall see. Believe it or not, hockey starts in like a week, Scotty. It's like training camps opening. Like, this is it. I mean, they're starting to filter in here for the next hockey season. I can't believe it's already here. A plethora of hockey news for you today. The Avalanche make Nathan McKinnon the highest paid player in the league. Eight-year extension. He's going to get $12.6 million per year. Considering he just brought them that, you know, that big shiny cup that you hold over yeah. your head, Scotty, I don't got no problem with that whatsoever. And, you know, he's the most exciting player in the NHL. He's the fastest player in the NHL with Connor McDavid. Uh, and he certainly got more hardware than Connor McDavid. Uh, now that he's got he a Stanley Cup. And when you win the Stanley Cup and you're one of the two greatest players in the league, bar none, you are going to get that bag. And he got it, and he deserves every penny. A trio of defensemen all retire on the same day within an hour of each other this morning. One of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. Zdeno Chara, 25 years in the NHL, he hangs him up. P.K. Subban, 13 years in the NHL. He hangs him up. Keith Yandel, 
who had that long Iron Man streak busted up by the Flyers this year because they're petty. He hangs it up. All three defensemen, Scotty, walking away. How embarrassing are the Philadelphia Flyers when they sat him down after he had the all-time record going uh, for Iron Man in the league? I thought that was just ridiculous. And then I, I got to tell you, Zdeno Chara was cement shoes. And uh, I got to top that with P.K. Subban absolutely has not mattered in the NHL for about three no. years now. He does nothing but skate around and get paid way too much money. He's actually uh, going to convert to television instantaneously. Yep. He'll be on Instant. national television. They love Subban, the TV networks. He's going to be all over TNT, ESPN, one of the two. You can count on it. Absolutely. He's going right into TV. He'll be good at it. You'll see him for a long time on the NHL broadcast. Kyrie Irving says the Nets needed the humbling experience of being swept by the Celtics. Uh, he's pretty good. Uh, this was at the humbling experience after everybody wanted to leave town three months ago. Didn't everybody want to leave? Now they needed a humbling experience? This guy's too. He's pretty How good. How about guy. we don't need guy. to listen to any of them, either uh, Cream Puff Reaper or this guy. You're the last two people anybody wants to hear. I'd rather listen to Joe Harris talk to me about his ankle. I mean, honestly, I'm done listening to Mr. Flat Earth. <laughs> Thanks so much. Why don't you get your vaccines, homie? Honestly. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The game that I find to be the most fascinating spread in all of the country today because it doesn't seem large enough. College football today. It's the island of misfit tour. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand. And survivor pools for the most part because Pro football I don't today. The most important player despite not being quarter focused of it and I, I think that continues to be a really important part of the offense half in -game in -game. Game. I said it'll be a pure access. track me shootout half in game I'm not one who's going to cheer for Kyler Murray but I am cheering for him in the second half in game live oh, overtime one block of nine K's and I almost I almost read it as if it was a question like what are they I doing the game when they were football you know, full circle just one and a half I mean this was an insane amount of get the million. winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. Aaron Rodgers is playing with a ton of new wide receivers this season and doesn't seem all that happy about it. Today we hit the streets of New York to help and find out what's the best way to make new friends. What would you say is the best way to make new friends? Uh, not by talking to them on the street. So not, don't do this. Yeah. Go out and drink. Go to the bar. You know, you have to. Maybe not like this. Give him money. Smile. That was nice. Want to give the smile again? The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Start with Tua, of course, who threw for 469 passing yards. Also, six touchdown passes. Uh, did throw two interceptions in the first half, but monster game for him speaking of which my gosh lamar jackson i uh i mean i love jared goff as a streamer in 12 team leagues i mean just getting to play with amon ross st brown who i think is probably a top five asset in dynasty fantasy football the sports grid network the early line but i think my takeaway is for all of my slander on the detroit lines their offense might rock right back-to-back -back games 35 plus points for the Detroit yeah. Lions. I'm Ross St. Brown is turning into one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. I think you're on to something yeah. here. The Lions, sometimes those teams that you have that tonic, right? The right moves were aggressive on offense, aggressive on special teams, and not very good, but aggressive on defense. You'll get high scoring games with the Lions. Only on Sports Grid.
All right, fast forward, Pharrell in your facial, the Pharrell finish. Anthony Edwards, Black Jesus, fined 40 grand for using anti-gay language in an Instagram video. Uh-oh. Uh, Carver Hyde thinks the fine should have been a lot more than that. He said that he makes that in a half. LSU student found shot dead in Baton Rouge. What is happening down in the bayou? You can't even go to school there. You're getting murdered on campus. Jesus. Nine million people told to evacuate as a super typhoon hits Japan. Carver High, you know Pharrell loves weather footage. I love watching live hurricanes, and cyclones, and typhoons, and earthquakes, and such. It doesn't get any better than that. Good luck to those people. Arkansas fan arrested for allegedly biting a man's nose after the win on Saturday. It turns out that the guy that bit the guy's nose is the CEO or something of the Beyond Meat Company. Like, you know, the plant-based uh, meat company. The guy's some big CEO and he's out biting people in public. Sounds like something I would do. Indiana to begin beer sales at Assembly Hall for men's and women's hoops. Now I know why my son wants to go to Indiana University instead of San Diego State. Beer at the hoop games. Two decomposed bodies found in an ex-Rhode Island mayor's house. Mr. Mayor, what have you been up to lately? Nothing, but I've got dead bodies in my house. And it smells like shack. <laughs> University of Tampa student fatally shot, ID'd for some reason as a New Yorker. Jesus. Jacksonville Sheriff's Office seizes enough fentanyl to kill one and a half million people. Carver High knows I love those fentanyl stories. New York City weatherman fired after his nude photos ended up on his boss's desk. The guy woke up, got a donut, got a cup of coffee, went into his big office, sat in his leather chair. The first thing he sees is his weatherman's package. <laughs> What's the end of it? Right there. GTD is next. Go to my site for action.